All right, so, you know, had an absence for, you know, Labor Day, Labor Day weekend, and now we're back in the strike back, and for this episode, you know, obviously it was going to be another great episode, I wasn't thinking, you know, they're going to do like a really huge episode just for, you know, missing one week or anything, it would just, you know, go about its way being a really good episode like Strike Back always is, but this week, you know, we got a really interesting episode, a lot of surprise deaths. Um, some were sad, others were just really surprising. Um, four deaths total, of course, the final one being the most surprising and most upsetting for me, and I'm sure a lot of you. And then others just, you know, really surprising because they came a lot faster, you know, than I would have expected, aside from um, Azuhari's wife being killed, which I didn't really expect. I thought, you know, they would find, you know, Azuhari, but of course they wouldn't capture him and they'd escape, but they you know, get his face and then it would continue from there. But she, you know, Azar's wife was actually killed off in the end. And, you know, the little uh, SD card or micro SD card taken from her watch is obviously going to play a huge part, you know, throughout the rest of the series, as well as the woman who took the SD card, who I'll get to later on. But, you know, this episode, it kind of took place, um, compared to other episodes, I say this one was actually very centered. You know, normally they're in this area, then it's like, okay, we have to go here, then they do this, and then they have, like, the crazy firefight that, they, you know, they start off driving, then they end up in a building, then they do that, and then they're back at base, and then they're doing another, you know, side mission for, like, the last 15 or so minutes of the episode, and then it kind of wraps up, and they've been in all these places, but in this episode, you know, we got Kumali's house, which was fairly quick at the beginning of the episode, uh, Leatherby took his daughter, we had, you know, Rachel in what I guess we'll call the safe house. And then we had um, Scott Stonebridge and the girls, who for some reason I can't think of their names. They pretty much just went to the camp, you know, got Leatherby's, or not Leatherby's, but got Kamali's daughter. And then I guess, you know, they did drive, but they didn't really show too much of that. You know, they were, you know, it was dark and then they got her in the car, then it was day and they pretty much got caught. And so they're in this building through most of the episode, and it was really cool because I was like, um, when you know action shows are shot in buildings like that, because it always makes it you know really interesting to me, just because you have this you know it's an open area, and it's really stacked on. So you know like they had in the episode, you know enemies can be above you, enemies can be below you, and then you're kind of trapped in the center, with enemies even you know reaching you on your own level. So the episode was really interesting how they were in this confined space, so to speak, and, you know, going up the floors and just, you know, killing people and trying, of course, not to be killed. You know, when Leatherby actually gets his people in and, you know, he goes in and he's just shooting rockets, you know, or shooting grenades just randomly through the air. And then, you know, once he sees them, he actually tries to hit them. And, you know, something that came up, you know, before that, that was really interesting. And I mentioned this in my previous, you know, one of my previous reviews, um, Stonebridge is being affected by the chemical warhead. And, you know, we see, like, he's going through, at first I didn't get what the problem was, I thought it was just something happening to him, and I didn't really think about it until, you know, the end of the episode when it, you know, he still has, like, the little uh, patch on his arm, and it's still like a line of blood right there, even though it should have easily healed, but of course... You know it's a dangerous chemical so things are obviously happening to his body that should not be happening to a trained soldier or to anyone really and you know he has problems focusing on vision and if you watch the previews for you know next week's episode or well not the previews but sort of the behind the scenes stuff you see that it's going to take even more of an effect later on when he can't you know do certain things but you know they sort of hinted at it and then of course they showed it more again at the end of the episode when he's really you know holding his arm and feeling the pain but you know they go through that after that you know short scene they're going through fighting against all these different people and then you know eventually it comes to the end and you know they're with Leatherby they have Leatherby's boyfriend and they're talking with him and it's really dramatic like I really love that scene and how it played out because you know, it seemed like they were going to be forced to kill Leatherby's boyfriend because 
you know, earlier in the episode, Weatherby kind of mentions how he wished his boyfriend had more guts because he just, you know, thanks him even though, you know, Leatherby like shot him in the stomach for like looking at the other guy. And, you know, he has that really dominating effect on his boyfriend. And, you know, Leatherby, even though he wants to dominate him, he even says to himself, you know, like, I wish you had the guts to just punch me sometimes. And so when, you know, Scott and Stonebridge have his boyfriend and they're saying, you know, if you don't tell us, you know, where Al Zahari is, you know, we're going to kill your boyfriend. And he says, you know, just have some guts and die with honor. But eventually, you know, after he goes on, he does give them, you know, the information they're looking for. And they let him go. And I thought, you know, it would be, you know, absolutely fine. He, they let him go. And this sort of, you know, double crossing type thing would, you know, continue on. But it doesn't because Leatherby sees his boyfriend look at um, look at Scott, and you know he he finally figures it out, and he you know he shoots his boyfriend, and Scott and Stonebridge both shoot him, and you know they both drop to the ground, and you know Leatherby says I'll see you in hell, and then Stonebridge you know kills him, and it was really surprising to me. And it kind of sucks because, like I mentioned before, I really liked him as a character. He seemed really interesting, but obviously, you know, it's just how the story had to play out, and that's how the writers did it. And I really appreciated it, you know, for what it was. I thought, you know, it was surprising. You know, obviously, once he looked, I thought, you know, it's going to happen right now. He's going to find out. And, you know, I was right. And, you know, he figured it out. He killed his boyfriend, and Scott and Stonebridge killed him. And, you know, no more Leatherby or his boyfriend. So, you know, they're both gone, which, like I said, is kind of unfortunate because I really liked him as a character. I thought it was kind of cool and just really, you know, crazy and interesting. I mean, when they were going up to the building, he's just walking and shooting in slow motion and, like, screaming and just wasting tons of bullets. He's just, like, shooting up a door. So, like, you know, he's, like, a crazy character. And obviously, you know, in the last episode... He shot his boyfriend in the stomach for looking at another guy or uh, cheating with another guy, really. And, you know, that type of character is just really crazy and you kind of want to see where it goes. And it led to him, you know, killing his boyfriend while being shot up himself. So it was a really interesting scene. Like, he took a lot of bullets and was just, like, shooting his boyfriend up. And also before that, when he was first shot, he just had, like, a stone look and he just got shot in the arm. He was just kind of like you know just mad about it like you just shot me that hurt and that was it which i thought was kind of cool and also kind of creepy and crazy but you know his death or both their deaths was a really interesting portion of the episode and counts for half you know half of the surprising deaths in the episode and you know aside from scott and stonebridge doing you know their huge mission rachel who you know in the first two episodes was kind of on her own is once again on her own but unfortunately she's you know going rogue in this case rather than you know just being on her own doing her mission you know she's gone rogue and she kidnaps this woman who does turn out to be al uh wife or al Zahari's wife i believe forgot but it was just crazy to watch her go through torturing the woman and you could see you know when she waterboards her She's not exactly happy about what she's doing, but she knows she has to get this information. And, you know, she does want the revenge, you know, from, you know, the very first episode for everything that happened. Obviously, she knows that she can't get Kumali because he's working with them now, but she knows that she can go straight for the top. And unfortunately, her, you know, trying to do that ends up getting her killed in the end of the episode. And, you know, it was very surprising. I was hoping, of course, for there to be like a last minute save where, you know, she'd actually still be able to shoot the woman and at least survive, even if she was like, you know, out of commission for a few episodes. But unfortunately, the woman, whose name I was, of course, forgot, you know, she does kill her. And, you know, that's, that's it. You know, it's the end of the episode, you know, Rachel is killed and there's, that's pretty much all there is to it and of course you know Kumali it's it's really hard to see you know what he's trying to do right now I mean you know we've had previous episodes where you know he says you know he says who he is he is CIA 
and he helps Scott and Stonebridge in the one episode. You know, he they think they're being captured, but he does come in and rescue them. And, you know, they have this dynamic where they don't really like him. And, of course, he doesn't like them either. And, you know, it just, they had to work together. But you really see in this episode that he doesn't care about these people. And he did let Rachel die. You know, he even says, like, oh, I was, you know, I was too late. I was almost there, but, you know, I didn't make it in time. And so that's when he was shot. And obviously he knew the woman. So, you know, she shot him in the arm. And, you know, who knows what really went down between them. It could have easily just been she saw him and just shot him in the arm because, you know, she knows who he is, but she shot him anyway. I don't know. Or she could know that he's kind of actually still with Al-Zuhari and not with the CIA. So it's going to be interesting to see how that does play out because just in this episode... I feel like him doing that and, you know, walking so slowly and not helping Rachel or going to help Rachel, you know, fast enough really shows how little he cares for anyone but himself and, of course, his daughter. So I'm really interested to see whether or not he does turn out to be a good guy in the end. And even if he is, you know, obviously in this show, it's kind of hard to just be, you know, black or white. And for a lot of characters, they are fairly neutral. And more often than not, even when they are good, they just seem like really bad people. So I'm definitely curious to see where things go with him. And, you know, just the rest of the series in general, you know, with uh, Scott being with the woman and they're, you know, Scott and Stonebridge almost being killed at the end of the episode. Definitely interesting, you know. In series, I always find it so crazy when they do that, where like the person could easily just shoot through this door because he's just going to shoot the two people when they open the door. So, why well, don't... I don't know. Because he would have done it instantly. But anyway, it's for any show that's ever been made where, like, they almost died if they opened the door. Obviously, they were about to. And then they get called away and the guy says, you know, next time, my friends. So, whoever that guy was who got the information from the woman, he will be coming back for sure. We'll probably... We'll, I'm assuming and hoping that we do get more information on him once he gets into less of the stealth aspect and more of the you know higher up activities where he's working more with Al-Zuhari, if that's even who it is, because of course it still could be um, the one guy's father, which actually that makes more sense. I believe that's who it might be. And he's, you know, an assassin for, um, for him. So, you know, him going around trying to kill Scott and Stonebridge will be interesting to see and also it'll bring in you know even more people into the series as we get um the one character's father of course horrible with names so I can't remember the guy's name who died in the first episode but you know his father of course is just you know just damaged and destroyed because his son was murdered and him knowing it was Scott and Stonebridge he will of course be coming back in and that's just yet another aspect to see you know, what's going to happen for this series and really who's going to survive because with the stuff they've done this season, you know, they killed off two main characters and it's only been, I believe, episode like three or episode four this week. So, you know, obviously Scott and Stonebridge are going to be fine because they're the main characters, but it kind of has me worried that, you know, anyone could really go. So, just, you know, who knows what's going to happen next. But comment below. Let me know what you thought of the episode. Um, favorite parts, least favorite parts. And I assume least favorite would really just be Rachel dying. Or it could even be Leatherby dying. Or for some reason, Al-Zuhari's wife dying. I don't know. But comment below. Let me know what you thought of the episode. And thanks for watching.